This is World Studies. In case you forgot what class you were in, you should have now taken the Chapter 18 test as well as done the homework assignment that I signed on Monday for you. Uh, you should also have received your Chapter 19 notes in your Week 5 packet. Just a reminder, please keep those notes. Do not turn them in with your packet. You will need them when we go on to the next week. So let's pick up where we left off. We're on page 347 in our textbooks. I want you to read the two intro paragraphs for the chapter on your own. Once you have finished reading, please unpause the video and we will continue. Let's get started. Rum number one, post-war reconstruction. We're talking about after World War One or World War II now. So this, this time period should be a bit more interesting for you guys. This is a time period in history in which your parents, your grandparents were alive. So, you know, the best way to know something about history is to talk to people who have lived it, who have experienced it. And so while I was born in the 80s, your parents or your grandparents were born much earlier and have experienced much more of this chapter, this time period. So if you're curious about anything that we bring up or talk about and you don't want to ask me, ask one of them. Uh, you connect with them either on Skype or email them or something. Talk to your parents, talk to your grandparents, and find out some more things about this time period, the Cold War. So... World War II had destroyed Europe and Japan. They would have to be rebuilt. The U.S. will be involved in the rebuilding process. Letter A, recovery after World War II. Recovery could not wait. The Soviet Union sought to gain control over all of Europe. Europe in poverty would lead to communism. Europe in recovery would lead to democracy. Number one, Western Europe. After World War II, Germany was divided into two countries, East Germany and West Germany. The reason why this was done was so to prevent a united Germany from ever starting another world war. East Germany was influenced by Russia, and West Germany was influenced by the Western Allies. Konrad Adenauer, he established a free market in West Germany and guided the country toward economic recovery and prosperity. This was a period known as the economic miracle of Europe. Um, Adenauer tripled the national income and led the small nation to produce more goods by 1955 than a larger Germany had produced prior to the war. So Adenauer helped West Germany, remember that was free Germany, democracy Germany, to recover rather quickly after World War II. France struggled after the war, but stabilized under the leadership of Charles de Gaulle in what was called the Fifth Republic. Um, you remember, of course, historically, France tends to have republics and then overthrow republics and establishes new governments. Well, now this is the fifth republic in France's history. Um, France had endured frequent shifts in government, beginning with the formation of the first republic in 1792 during the French Revolution. The French formed the Second Re Republic in 1848 during unrest in Paris when Louis Napoleon Bonaparte came to power. Following France's defeat by the Prussians in 1870, the French established the Third Republic. After World War II, the French established the Fourth Republic. However, this weak government lasted only 11 years. In 1958, Charles de Gaulle established the Fifth Republic, which governs France to this day. Britain also began to decline and lost most of its colonial empire. This included places like India and Burma. Rather than continuing to have a leading role on the world scene, Britain will only play a supporting role with the U.S. Number two, Japan. Japan also recovered quickly and established a democracy. After the war, Douglas MacArthur controlled Japanese affairs under his leadership, Japan recovered quickly. By 1955, Japan was ruling itself again under the Liberal Democratic Party, 
Uh, this party would retain control of politics in Japan until the 1990s. Japan advanced quickly in industrial and electronic technology. With the help of the U.S., Japan created a competitive heavy industry. Japanese automakers gradually became world leaders. You think of companies like Toyota and others. By the 1980s, Japan had developed a world market in high-quality electronic equipment, such as televisions, radios, and computers, Toshiba, etc. Letter B, stabilization and growth in Western Europe. To stabilize Western Europe after the war, the U.S. sent billions of dollars in aid. Europe recovery varied with each country depending on their acceptance of capitalism or socialism. Number one, stabilization. It was referred to as the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan was where the U.S. poured billions of dollars to stabilize Western Europe. Actually, uh, the U.S. did offer every country in Europe, including Russia, money from the Marshall Plan, but Russia, the Soviet Union, forced its allies to refuse this money because, after all, communism accepting money from the capitalists, that sounds, well, contradictory to what communism is all about. And so only Western Europe, the country is free from communism, accepted this money. As Western Europe recovered economically, communism became less attractive, and communist parties in various countries declined in influence. Before this time, places like Italy and France were threatened with communist takeovers. But thanks to the Marshall Plan, all of that faded away. Number two, growth. European leaders realized the need for some form of unity to prevent future wars between European countries. While political unity failed, economic unity became a reality. In 1951, France, West Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg formed the European Coal and Steel Community. The organization succeeded in eliminating waste, inefficiency, and made the products more affordable to the member nations. Also, uh, Europe created what became known as the common market. It expanded product production, removed trade barriers, and increased sales in Europe. Rather than each country working with its own independent economy, now all of these economies will work together. Over the next 40 years, the common market grew to include nearly 30 countries. Number three, welfare states and stagnation. The term welfare state means government provision of economic and social benefits for their citizens. This could include government takeover of key businesses, setting up a universal national health care system, or creating a tax-subsidized retirement plan. By the 20th century, most developed nations had a welfare state of some kind, including the U.S. After the war, both Britain and France developed into welfare states, resulting in high taxes and unemployment. In Britain, the Labour Party created the National Health Service and took control of key industries. By the 1970s, unemployment and inflation had crippled the economy. The Labour Party was voted out and replaced with the Conservative Party in 1979. We'll talk more about them later. In France, they created a universal health care and retirement program. They set a minimum wage that was nearly double that in the U.S., the cost of these policies, by the way, sounds like all these good things, free health care, higher unemployment benefits, higher minimum wages, but the cost of these policies are high taxes, high unemployment, and regulations that hinder competitiveness. Letter C, the spread of democracy. NATO was formed, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is an international organization that was created to protect its members from Soviet aggression. Remember, World War II was over, the Soviets were our allies, but now there's fear that the Soviet Union will try to take over the rest of Europe. They'd done that to Eastern Europe. What's going to stop them from Western aggression? Well, 
NATO was created to prevent the Soviet Union from doing this. The countries that you see in the blue and the light blue represent those countries that will join or be original members of NATO. Countries that are in the red or pink are countries that will remain loyal to the Soviet Union. Countries in the blue are, or sorry, the white are the neutral countries. They join neither side. A little bit more information about NATO. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an international league that was founded in 1949. The league's original intent was to protect its member nations from Soviet aggression. Its original members included the U.S. and the nations of Western Europe. The organization proved to be effective during the Korean War and on other occasions. Challenges to NATO included the Soviet Union's formation of the Warsaw Pact in 1955 and the withdrawal of France from NATO in 1966. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, several Eastern European states have also joined NATO. Some nations quickly embraced democracy and thrived. Others struggled and endured conflict as various groups tried to destroy these young democracies. Greece, if you look on the map here, Greece is located down here. It's kind of at a, a cutting off point between the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe and the West democracy. Greece fought a civil war in which democratic forces eventually defeated communist forces. Civil war lasted from 1944 to 1949. British and American support enabled the anti-communist forces to prevail. Greece quickly joined NATO afterwards. Communist parties did take root in many countries. Um, it wasn't always communist countries versus democratic countries. All nations saw a communist party form within their own country, including the U.S. Few countries had to resort to an armed conflict, as did Greece, but many countries experienced internal struggles. Lastly, letter D, the role of the United Nations. Uh, the United Nations, otherwise known as the UN, is an international organization created to preserve peace and seek solutions to problems around the world. The U.S., Britain, and Soviets agreed to the creation of this organization during World War II. It was created in 1945 when 50 nations sent representatives to the first meeting. The UN has struggled to solve many of these problems because it fails to recognize a biblical moral standard. Uh, the EU, or sorry, the UN is still around today, but since nearly all countries in the world are now members, some members in the UN caused the problems. During the Cold War, while the Soviet Union was a leading member, it was also causing some of the problems. Because the UN doesn't recognize a biblical moral standard, while the UN may condemn atrocities like genocide, it also supports immoral actions like abortion. That's all of the material that we're going to cover for today. For your homework, I want you to do pages 153 and 154 in your activities book. 153 is a map um, of China, of Japan, and page 154 is a map of Korea. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.